Some people are just ugly, I'm sorry. I don't know. Like, I don't like what I'm seeing. Mm, you're too short. And you're just too tall or streaky. Who here has ever been hit with an insult? Something like what I just said. And when I say hit by an insult, I don't mean just insulted. No, no. I mean you get slapped in the face with an insult. It hurts. It affects you. So who's been hit with an insult of any kind from anyone? Come on. You can't have gone on to be this old and not have been insulted. Yes. OK. So we can all agree that words actually have an impact. Yes? Words can hurt. Words can build. Words can do a lot. The more important the person that aims the insult at you, the more it'll affect you. So I'm a complete stranger. I'm calling you dumb and stupid. It doesn't matter because what do I know? But if it was your mother and she came up to you and she said, I honestly think that you are stupid, that traumatizes a person. That leaves a mark. Words are of great importance. And if you look through history, okay, whenever you see someone who is influential, a person that has left their mark, anyone that was so much, a, like changed history so much, they became a part of history. Can, can you think of anyone? I can think of prophets. I can think of people like Gandhi, like Martin Luther King Jr., like even Hitler. What did they all have in common? Words. They all had a way with words. They can move people. They sat, they gave speeches, and they moved you. You wanted to believe in their cause. You wanted to move. You wanted to do things. You wanted to change things. So having a way with words kind of gives you a way with life. So as I mentioned before, the more important the person that, give, that tells you the words is, the more they'll affect you. So if it comes from a parent, it'll be more effective. But then what if it comes from the most important person in your life? Can anyone tell me who's the most important person in your life? Yourself. And the thing is, we always pay attention to what to, we say to others about them, because we have to be careful and respectful. But we're never careful what we say to ourselves. And we talk to ourselves all the time. You wake up in the morning, the first thing in your head, oh, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I don't want to get out of bed. That's a conversation. You're telling yourself that you're tired. You're giving yourself that mental cue. And then there are the words that we say out loud. I'm having a conversation with you, and I decide, OK, no, I'm feeling down today. Oh, no, I'm feeling this. I'm this. I'm this. I'm that. And we're constantly complaining. So those words all together, they affect us. According to most schools of psychology, the mind is divided into the conscious mind. The conscious mind is basically what I'm using right now. It's the mind that is producing the words I'm speaking, what I can see, what I can hear, all of those things that are currently happening, the present. And then there's the layer underneath, the subconscious. The subconscious is that pool of information that we can access and bring up to our, to our conscious very easily. I could easily recall my phone number. I can recall my parents' name. But I'm not using them right now. But it's there. The information is there. I can access it. Underneath that, there's the unconscious. The unconscious is basically a collection of memories, thoughts, uh, information that you've gathered all through your life that you can't access right now. You don't remember it anymore. It doesn't exist in your head anymore. But it's there. It is an undercurrent just underneath everything else that you can access, and it shapes you. It's your personality. It's your character. It's your pet peeves. It's your little tics. It's who you are. How does the flow of information go? You speak. The words are out. They're in your conscious mind, the present. They travel down into your subconscious. They stay there for a while, and then eventually you're going to forget. But no, they just go into your unconscious, and they shape you. And that's who you end up becoming. Now, I've had a bit of an experience with words, and it took me a while, but it was a couple of years ago when I figured this out. I was a medical student for six years. And, OK, some background information. When I was in high school, my whole life, I'd been told, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. So when I went to high school, I believed them and decided, you know what, I'm smart. I'm just going to rest. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to put in any effort. Why should I bother? I'm smart. So 
So I didn't. I caught class. I didn't attend uh, classes. I didn't do anything, not reports, not books, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I managed to maintain a B-plus average because I am smart. Like, it's a fact. So when I came to med school, I decided, you know what? This is med school. It's important. I'm going to put in some effort. I'm going to study. I'm going to work. I'm going to apply myself. And I did. And it started off, I was mm -hmm, and then I started struggling. And I was struggling, but I was still moving along. And then I hit a wall. I was struggling, but I was not moving forward. It was, I kept, my grades kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And every time I would fail an exam or something would happen, I'd go speak to academics and they'd tell me, apply yourself, study harder, work harder, just study, just try, just put, you can do this, come on, just, you just need to study a little more. So I did. And every time I'd study more, I'd just fail worse. And every time I tried harder, worse. Every single time for three years. That was my life. I'd just try harder and then just end up failing worse. So at the end of three years, I was exhausted. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to stop fighting. That's it. I'm done. I'm tired. You know, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. I can't do it anymore. I'm just going to stop fighting. And that's when I realized something. All through medicine, all I had done was I studied to get good grades, and then I started studying to not fail. But then I remembered that I went into medicine because I loved learning about the human body. It fascinates me. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing facility, and it's wonderful. So I decided, I don't care what the lecturers say. I have a topic. I don't care what the slides say. I don't care what's going to come on the exam. I have a topic, and I'm going to study it. Not for anything, not for them, not for grades. Grades and I, we don't get along. I'm going to study to learn. And I did. So I changed the words that I was saying to myself. That was the first change that I applied. I just changed the words that I was saying to myself. The second change was a little more subtle. You see, for four years out of the six years of medicine, I was an insomniac. And by insomniac, I don't mean, it, oh, it took me half an hour to fall asleep. No, I mean days at a time where I wouldn't get a minute of sleep. I went to doctors, I went to high, and, and the best they could figure out, oh no, your brain is just hyper. Take sleeping pills, which I refuse to take because I have an irrational fear of addiction. But anyway, so for four years, my brain was struggling. And then I realized something. I'm weird. My whole life I've been weird. I'm an oddball. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm extremely, extremely odd. So maybe the advice that people was, were giving me doesn't work. Maybe it's not right, not right for me, not a good fit. So I decided I'm going to try to listen to my body, and it took a lot of trial and error. But here's where I learned, OK? After years of studying from the minute I opened my eyes until the minute I try to sleep and fail. I attend the lecture, take notes. Pay attention, take notes. Long break. Go back, review my notes make my own notes and read the book. Long break. Before sleeping, just stay in bed, don't read anything, don't read any notes, just close my eyes and review everything that I learned that day. And I had it. The information was in my head, it did not leave, it was there when I needed it, when I went into my exams, everything was good. I went from failing miserably, like really miserably, to passing, not, not just passing, I maintained a score that was, oopsie. Sorry. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I maintained a score that was in the top 15 of the class for the entire duration of the semester, my last semester in Odyssey. So what did it take? I listened to what my head had been trying to tell me for four years of insomnia. There was too much information in my head, too many repetitions of the same information. It was like garbage. My brain didn't know what to do with it. It was too much. It stayed up all night trying to sort it out and put it where it belonged, but it, it had no place. It was too much. All I needed was that long break, long break. Words are important. By changing the words you say to yourself and by listening to what the thoughts that your brain tries to tell you, you can change things. Now, there was a pharmacist.
His name was Emil Kui. And he was the guy that, uh, that found the placebo effect. The placebo effect is when you take a drug and uh, you know that the drug is going to work. Even if it's candy, you know it's going to work, then you have a better chance of getting better. So basically, Emil Kui, after he figured out the placebo effect, he started studying and he found a technique called autosuggestion. It was later improved by another scientist named Schultz and turned into autogenic training. And what it basically was that you'd give a patient their drug and you tell them that along with taking this medication, you need to repeat a mantra. You repeat that mantra the whole time that you're, whenever you're relaxing, you repeat it to yourself. And what they found was amazing. When you repeated that mantra to yourself, the patients that repeated the mantra and actually followed the advice, their physiological processes responded to the drugs faster and more effectively than people that didn't. So with words, with the power of the words they were saying to themselves, they managed to change their physiology. Not even just their mind or their personality, no, their actual physiology. And then you get people that tell you, oh no, this is just who I am. I can't change who I am. Oh no, I have a bad, I, my temper is horrible. If I get angry, I don't see, I'm blind. And they tell you I can't change. Who says that? The only problem is with the method we use to change. Because we think that, okay, I want to lose weight, I'm obese, and I want to lose weight. We think that I'm going to get an epiphany, and suddenly, after years of loving food, I'm going to get an epiphany and hate food, and it's going to be easy, and I'm going to quit, and everything will be fine, I'll lose all the weight. It doesn't work like that. It works from the outside in. So you start off changing what you say to yourself. Okay, I acknowledge I love food, but it's getting, getting unhealthy. I need to start eating less. I will resist, I will fight, I will try, I will hide. You change your words. When you change your words, it changes your actions. Because you can't keep saying, oh yes, I'm energetic today, and you're asleep, and you're just lazy, oh, I'm energetic today. It doesn't work. Whenever you say something, it kind of affects you, it pulls you, I'm energetic today, oh, I'm energetic, oh, look, I have energy. So it changes your actions. When you change your actions, your actions change your thoughts. Once your thoughts change, your emotions change. And when your emotions change, then you can solidify the change in your personality and you can keep going until you are a different person, until you're a changed person. What I'm trying to tell you is that words are a magnificent weapon. Anyone that ever mattered knew that and they knew how to use them. So my advice to you is in order to utilize your words, the first thing you need to do is in the morning, when you wake up, get a notebook. And for one whole day, just write everything you say to yourself down. Whether it's in your head or out loud. If you have so much of the thought, oh, I need to go to the bathroom, just write it down. Anything that you have, any single thought, just write it down. Anything you say to other people about yourself. I'm having a bad day. Oh, I'm sick, I'm tired. I, whatever it is, anything you say that refers to yourself, just write it down for one whole day. And then before you go to sleep, just look at that paper, and you'll notice that whatever you wrote down, whatever is on there, it changed your entire mood and affect for that day. It affects you. It shaped who you were for that single day. And then you can start changing. How do you change? You talk to yourself. Do you know that there's a study that the most successful people usually talk to themselves? Like literally, they sit down and they have conversations with themselves. You're not crazy. You're crazy if you hear voices back, but if you're just talking to yourself, then it's okay. You can just have a conversation, okay? Today is going to be a good day. Today I am going to do this and this, and I can do it. I can pull this off. I know it's difficult, but I can manage it. It's okay. Just have a conversation, and then at the end of the day, have another conversation with yourself. Just review the whole day. Review what you did. Review what you said. These little conversations, these edits of your day, of the things you say, just help you pay attention to what you're doing to yourself, to the subconscious, the unconscious changes that you're applying to yourself just because you're not paying attention. You have to pay attention to what you say. Words are a weapon. And if you cultivate that weapon, then you've got a weapon like no other because you can't lose it. And it has infinite power. Once you master your words, 
you manage to master yourself. And the thing is, you can't control your surroundings. You can't control your environment. You can't control what happens to you. Things will happen that are unexpected and you didn't account for them. But what you can control is you can control every single aspect of yourself, even your personality and your character. If you could manage to control that, if you have absolute control, then you've mastered yourself. And once you master yourself, then you can manage to master your life. Thank you.